Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond, and in this video I'm going to talk about my custom gaming table. Now what you're seeing here is the game topper that I put on top of my gaming table, but in my game topper review, which I did a little while ago, and you can watch it by clicking the I in the corner of this video or the link in the description below. In that video I showed people that I put this game topper on top of a custom built Kallax gaming table. Now I got a lot of positive comments on that video and a lot of people wanted to know just how I built this custom table and it's really simple so I put some pictures up on my Facebook but I thought since so many people asked me uh, how I built it I thought I'd do a video on it as well just to show you exactly how I put it together, uh, how I designed it, what my ideas were. So let's quickly get started. So the idea of making a custom gaming table came from the need to have more storage. I used to have a very simple wooden table that I used to play my games on and shoot my reviews on, etc. And in 2019, it was in the spring, I backed the Game Toppers 2.0 Kickstarter by Kevin and Josiah Berkersmeyer, uh, Berkey as he likes to be called. And I wanted to put that topper on top of my regular table to turn that into a full gaming table. And later I met Berkey at Spiel 2019 after I had backed his Kickstarter. And there he asked me if I was interested in helping out for a day because he had few people at his booth. So I did, and doing so I learned a lot about Game Toppers and his product. And I was really happy when I got it uh, by the end of 2020. I think it was October. So I set it up on my table and as more Kickstarters came in and more games, I needed more space to put all those games. And I started just putting boxes underneath my table. And I thought, well, that won't do. Because I have two 5x5 Kallax shelves in my gaming room, which are full of games. And then I have some additional spots where I can store some games, but it just wasn't enough. And of course you do sell some games now and then, but they just kept coming in faster than I could play them. So I looked at my table and all the boxes I had stacked underneath and I thought, well that's a lot of real estate gone to waste underneath my table. So I started looking up some examples on the internet of how people use their furniture for storing games. And I saw some pretty cool ideas, and one of them was people using a Kallax shelf as the basis for a table or a bar or a room divider. And I thought, well, there's a lot more you can do with these shelving units. And now we also have Besta shelves in our house, which is also an IKEA shelf. And those have bigger shelves than the Kallax squares, so you can store bigger games in there. So I toyed with the idea of taking a couple of those Besta shelves and putting on a MDF board on top that would serve as the basis for my game topper. So I drew out a couple of ideas in SketchUp and I started with the standard Holmes size, which is a game topper with a three foot by six foot inner measurement. Now I also ordered an XL leaf for my topper so I could make it extra large, uh, making my playing surface three foot by eight foot. And so I also designed an idea with the best of shelves for that. Basically for the standard Holmes, you need two best of squares and for a Holmes XL, you'd need three. Now the best of shelving unit has a couple of pros and cons. The cons are that storage while it accommodates for bigger games, is more limited than the solution that I finally came up with with the Kallax shelves. The backside of the shelving units are closed and on the front you can optionally put doors. And you can use those doors to cover the entire shelf or a part of the shelf. You can even have drawers in there if you want to. So it seemed like a very clean solution if you don't want to see all those game boxes. You can also put these units on legs which are about 10 centimeters tall 
And so the comfort of this solution was pretty good. You could seat people anywhere at this table comfortably with their legs underneath and you could even slide your feet underneath the shelves due to these legs. Now in order to assemble this, I would need to screw my MDF board on top of these shelves and thus basically damaging the top of those shelves. I need to permanently screw them on which isn't a problem per se, but if you wanted to disassemble your table later and use those shelves for another purpose, then you'd have holes in the top. Also, I worried a little bit about the stability. Now, these Besta shelves are pretty sturdy. They have a back, so they have kind of like a cross support. And if you fill them with games, there will be enough weight to make it reasonably stable. But if you have a lot of people sitting on your table and someone would get up from the table and apply a lot of pressure to the edge of the rail of the game topper or just the top of the table if you don't have a game topper, then I worried a bit about stability. The whole thing might tip over if you're not careful. Although I do think that with the Holmes XL, the added leaf and the added Besta unit in the center, the whole setup is pretty big and pretty heavy, so tipping over would be a minor concern, but it was there. So then I started designing a solution with Kallax shelves. Now a Kallax 2x2 unit is a pretty nice solution for this. And I thought, you know, if you have a regular Holmes, once again, I put one of those in the middle and two of them at the heads, which would make for a very stable construction. The downside of that design though is if you're not sitting at the exact center of one of the sides, you might bump your legs against these shelves. I just couldn't fit two chairs next to each other in the middle with a standard Holmes and you'd have to sit back a bit. But fortunately with the Holmes XL, I designed it so that I would have two 2x2 two two calyxes in the center and two at the heads and that allowed me to fit exactly three chairs next to each other between the two head calyxes. So three people could sit next to each other on each side comfortably. And the benefit of using a Kallax over the Besta is that the storage space is much higher. You can store a lot more games into this setup than in the Besta setup. Like I mentioned, it's also a lot more stable because it's a big surface. You have more shelves, more weight to it. And I kind of like seeing the games on my shelves. And this way I could see them from both sides and easily pick the games I wanted to play. Now, of course, these will just sit on the ground. There are no legs underneath these calyxes. So if you're sitting at the table, you will shove your feet against these Kallax shelves if you're keeping your legs straight. But I measured the distance between the Kallaxes and the edge of my game topper and that was about 14 inches or 36 centimeters. And that turned out to be enough room to comfortably sit at the table. And most of the time I tuck my feet beneath my chair anyway. The only problem that might arise is when sitting at the head of the table because there's a little less room there. There's about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters of clearance between the calyx and the edge of the table. So sitting there might require you to sit back a little or to just spread your legs. Now, if you're a gamer who plays a lot of D&D or other role-playing games and you want to be sat at the head of the table as the game master, uh, an easy solution would be to leave out the head Kallax. So just use three Kallax units for a Holmes XL setup and center those three in a T shape instead of the H shape that I'm using now. So once I had my design figured out, we went to Ikea and bought four of these Kallax 2x2 units. We brought them home, I unpacked them and I started assembling them. Now these units come with felt stickers that you stick underneath the bottom of these units where the screws are to prevent scratching your floor. But since you only get 
four stickers because every side only has four screws, I felt that those wouldn't support the bottom enough. So I went and bought a sheet of adhesive felt in the same thickness, which is about two or three millimeters. And I cut that into four equal strips and I stuck those underneath the floors of these units in the middle parallel with the center divider. That way, when there's weight in these shelves from all of my board games, the bottom of the Calyx unit wouldn't sag. I just wanted to make sure that all the load was divided equally. Now, I decided to leave off the tops of these units so that I could save on some height. Now, a normal Calyx unit, a 2x2, two two, is about 30 inches tall or 76 centimeters, which is slightly taller than the Besta unit, which with legs is 25 and a half inches or 75 centimeters tall. A normal desk is usually about 29 inches or 73 centimeters tall. And since I was also placing a game topper on top of it, I didn't want the whole assembly to be too tall because that would be uncomfortable to sit at. Plus, I needed to put the 25 millimeter thick MDF board on top of it all. I wanted to have a solid board to support the topper fully. I calculated that if I left off the tops of these Calyx shelves, which are about an inch and a half thick or four centimeters, I'd save that much. And plus the 25 millimeters from the MDF board, my total height would be about 75 centimeters or 29 and three quarters of an inch. Add to that the game topper, which is about three inches or eight centimeters tall. The total height of my table's edge would be about 32 and three quarters of an inch or 83 centimeters, with the inner vault being about an inch and a half or four centimeters lower, which for me is a very comfortable table height. Then I took my MDF board, which was a board that was 122 meters by 2.44, and I had it sawed down to a width of 103 centimeters, which is exactly the width of the bottom of my home's game topper because I wanted it to fully support my home's topper, including the friction tape. Now the length of my board was 2.44 meters, which is about 96 inches or eight feet. And that was just a couple of inches shy of supporting the friction tape. But since the entire topper was supported in its full width, I didn't worry about that too much since these toppers can overhang several inches easily. So I took my MDF board, put it on the kitchen table and took the four tops of the Calyx units and placed those on top of that, measuring out the exact position of where the shelves would be, making sure it was all very symmetrical and centered. Once I was happy with the placement, I took a very thin pencil and just drew the holes on top of my MDF board. Then I removed the tops of the Calyx shelves, checked the holes, measured them out again, just to be sure they were all in the right spots. And then I measured the screws that IKEA provides with these Calyx shelves. And I drilled holes that were slightly wider than the diameter of these screws, but less wide as the thread of those screws so that I could easily screw them in without too much friction, but the thread of the screw would still catch into my MDF board. Once I had done that, I took a drill bit to sink the holes for the screws so that the IKEA screws would sit flush with the top of the board. And after that, we turned the board around and I took some sanding paper and sanded the entire bottom of the board. After sanding, I took a damp cloth with some cleaner and I cleaned the entire surface and the edges to take off all the sawdust and to make sure I didn't leave any greasy fingers on the surface. And then we primed the entire surface and the edges of the table. And I let that dry for about four hours and then I applied the final white lacquer finish. The primer and the white coating were all acrylic based, but I let the final coating dry an entire night just to be sure. So then came the moment of truth. We picked up the board, flipped it over again so the sunken holes would be on top, and we placed it on top of the four Calyx units. Fortunately, my floor was straight enough so that the Calyxes were close together. 
and the MDF board sat on top perfectly. And then I screwed in all the screws, making it one solid table. And then we repeated the process of cleaning the top, applying the primer, and after that dried the final lacquer finish. Now I didn't fill in the holes of the screws after screwing everything together. I could have done that and just filled them out and painted them over so I wouldn't see the holes. But since I was going to put my game topper on top, I wouldn't see the top of the MDF board anyway. Plus, if I should ever move, I can still disassemble the entire setup and take it apart. But if you have a big enough mat, you can just roll it out over the top of this setup or just use a big tablecloth and you're ready to go. Another thing I did to my Calyx shelves was to leave out the center vertical supports of the top rows. This gave me two advantages. First of all, I only needed to drill holes for the screws that go into the sides of these units and I did not need to drill holes in the bottom of my MDF sheet to accommodate the dowels that are used to put these vertical dividers in place. I did of course have to shorten the dowels for the bottom vertical divider, but that was of course easily done and I even applied a little bit of white paint on the sawed off sides. And the second advantage is of course that I could now put in bigger game boxes on those shelves. The entire setup looked and felt very solid. Because of the felt underneath the Calyx units, I could slide around my table and put it exactly where I wanted it. And it was quite heavy, but without the game topper and the games, it was very doable. So then I put my game topper with the XL leaf on top and I was very happy with the result. All I needed to do was fill it with games, which was of course not a problem at all. And that's it. I can now seat six people comfortably at this table, three on each side. And if needed, people can sit at the heads of the tables. You can even sit people at the corners of the table, you know, putting up to 10 people at the table. And because game toppers have introduced legs for their game toppers in the 3.0 Kickstarter, I could technically take off my topper, get a leg kit, put that underneath and have a separate big game topper table and simply use one of the game topper mats and put that on the IKEA table and have two really large gaming surfaces for those occasions where you have a lot of people coming over to play games. And that is how I built my custom table. Now, if you're interested in a game topper or just a game topper mat, check out their recent Kickstarter. Maybe you can still late pledge. I'll put a link in the description below or just go to their website, gametoppersllc.com. And again, my topper is a Holmes XL, but this solution could easily be applied to several of their game topper sizes. And so that's it. That's how I built my Calax gaming table. I hope this was informative and maybe you want to build something like this yourself. So good luck with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified whenever I upload a new video. Please also consider becoming a Patreon saint to my channel by clicking the link in the description below or the Patreon icon at the end of this video that will take you to my Patreon page where you can see how you can support me and you'll also get your name in the credits of all of my videos. It's greatly appreciated and really helps me make more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.